Well, it finally happened. Nintendo finally put out the expansion pack to their online services. So a lot of people blowing this thing out of proportion. There's definitely some criticisms, but I think the biggest question we can all be asking is, is it worth it? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing. I would appreciate it. So like I said before, Nintendo 64 games are out on the Switch. Not only that, but a collection of Sega Genesis games actually came to the Switch as well, in addition to the N64 games for the expansion pack. And on top of that, the paid Animal Crossing DLC is included in this membership. Now let's get some things out of the way first. This is an annual membership. You don't have to have this. Existing users can still be subscribed to the Super Nintendo and Nintendo version of the pay, you know, the online services. You don't have to upgrade it. That's why it's called an expansion pack. But I've been seeing a lot of people talking about whether or not the price is warranted for the extra $25 upgrade. Because that's what it boils down to. If you had the Switch online already, you're already paying $25. Bucks. So really, it's not $50 that you're paying right now. It's $25 or even $33 depending on, you know, where you're at in your subscription cycle. So that's the facts. With this expansion pack that is an, ex an additional $25, you're getting the Sega Genesis collection, the N64 collection, on top of the already existing libraries of the Super Nintendo and Nintendo games that are available on the service, as well as the addition to play online. Let's talk about why N64 on the Switch is smart. Having legacy titles available to the masses is always going to be a pro. That's always going to be a good thing. That's the thing that we complain about the most, right? That's the thing that leads people to emulate games because Nintendo doesn't support their games, which they, you know, they don't. And if they do support them, you're going to pay for it like we're seeing right now. Preservation of old games on current hardware is always going to be a good thing. I think the biggest question and the biggest thing I've been seeing with people is asking, you know, is it is it too expensive? Is this $25 upgrade too much, you know. I think it is worth mentioning as well that this does come with the Animal Crossing paid DLC. I don't know if I said that before already, but that is included, which is $25 standalone. When asking the question, is it too expensive? I want you to consider a couple of things. One, it would cost way more money to buy these games physically, as well as the system that is required to play the games, unless you still own your systems. Not only that, digitally buying these games, you know, the games that are available, because I think what? Virtual console games on the Wii U and 3DS were around, what, 7 or $8? Something like that. So even just to buy the games that are available right now, which I think there's 9 games that you can play right now, even just buying those games, you're still going to be out more buying them on the virtual console. That would be basically a year of the service, a little over a year of the service actually, price-wise. And you still wouldn't have access to Nintendo and Super Nintendo games. Hey! Thanks so much for showing up. If this is your first time here, I would really appreciate it if you consider subscribing. It would seriously mean a lot. A fun fact for you, many YouTubers actually get most of their numbers from people who are not subscribed. So if you enjoy my personality, if you enjoy the content you've seen here, consider subscribing. I would seriously, seriously appreciate it. That's just with the Nintendo 64 side alone. That doesn't even count the eight or nine games that are available on Sega Genesis, which to my knowledge, I don't think have ever been available on a Nintendo console via virtual console. I'm not sure. Here's the thing. Nintendo has added games to the NES and NES side of things for the Nintendo's, you know, online service. They've been adding games every couple of months. That's going to happen again with the Nintendo 64 games and Sega Genesis games. We already know that more games are going to be incoming, and, you know, while there's a few legacy titles that are favorites available right now, that's something to definitely look forward to in the future, is if you up, if you re-up your, if you upgrade your service now, in the future you're going to be getting more games. Not to mention... The fact that there's still going to be more NES and SNES games being added, unless I missed something where Nintendo said they're not going to be adding anymore. Here's the biggest thing. If you already had online, you're already paying $25 annual. If you're adding another $25 on top of that, that's basically 4 bucks a month. I mean, that's a, that's one cup of coffee. I've heard a lot of people argue and say like, oh, well, you know, PlayStation Plus and Game Pass, like these are better services. I think objectively speaking, yeah, you're probably right. You know, PlayStation Plus gives you two new free games a month. Game Pass gives you, you know, access to current games. You're still not getting exactly what you want on those services, though. Nintendo is taking a different approach. They're giving you legacy titles to be able to play on the current hardware. That's something that, in the PlayStation realm of things, PlayStation lacks a lot of backwards compatibility. I don't hear anyone complaining about the fact that they can play the definitive versions of the new Grand Theft Auto games as, you know, for, for paying $60 for those. I haven't heard anyone complaining about that. Everyone seems to be pretty jazzed about that. But whenever the premiere versions of these games come to Switch at a di relatively discounted rate, whenever you look at it, 
I don't understand why people are upset. I've heard people say, oh, well, you know, Nintendo's just taking ROMs and packaging it, you know, repackaging it and selling it back to us. That's exactly what they're doing. The difference is it's their property. I think as gamers, we continue to like get this misrepresentation that we actually own the games that we buy. That's not how it works. You own a license to play the game, but that game is in fact the publisher and developer's property, period. So if Nintendo wants to repackage their games and sell them, you that's fine. They can do that. If you don't want to buy them, that's also fine. But there's a lot of us that have been looking forward to this. I've been wanting more reason to pick, even more reason to pick up our Switch. So I've given a lot of positives as to why this is a good thing and why it's not too expensive, but you know, I think there's a few cons for sure. If you only play your Switch lightly, yeah, I mean, this upgrade may not be for you. For the simple fact, yeah, I mean, you're going to be paying 50 bucks a year and you're not going to be getting the newest exclusives coming out. You're going to still going to have to you're still going to have to pay for those. Uh, you know, even considering the initial online aspect with NES and Super Nintendo games, the online aspect has never been amazing. I mean, being able to play Fortnite and Apex, those games run great, but something like Smash Brothers? Yeah, I mean, Smash Brothers uh, does not run well online. Like, that's just, it's just a known fact that it, it, it performs poorly. But then again, that falls more on, that doesn't fall on the publisher, that falls more on the developer. So maybe Sakurai, you know, should spend less time getting new characters out and figure out a way to make the online services work. <laughs> um, shots fired. <laughs> again, this is Nintendo's property. It's not yours. So if you want to crack your console to play these games free of charge, you know, just keep in mind that that is thievery. You are stealing if you do that then by all means, go for it. If you don't want to have to pay these game, pay for these games because you already own them and your system broke, whatever, by all means, emulate away. Do the, do the thing. And, you know, play, play it wherever you want, but you're not going to be able to play it on your Switch. That's just, if you want these games, you're going to have to upgrade the $25. just no getting around that. The biggest question that comes back around is, is it worth it? Is it, Gabe, is it worth that you've been telling us all this stuff? Is it worth the $25 upgrade? More games, more fun, another reason to jump into the Switch, another feature available for the Switch, more added. I mean, it's to me, it, it seems like a no-brainer. As an Animal Crossing fan, I mean, basically I'm getting my first year of Nintendo and, you know, and Sega Genesis games for free because I'll be diving in to the new Animal Crossing expansion whenever it comes out in November. So for me, it's a no-brainer. Again, kind of reviewing the positives, it's a better deal than buying physical or digital versions of the game. It's accessible on current hardware. You get the Animal Crossing upgrade, which is already $25. And last but not least, it's perfectly legal to, to, to play these games on the Switch and pay for them and purchase them. Or at least purchase the ability to play them. A few negatives is, you know, online is borderline... You know, having online capabilities is borderline pointless. Like, you might as well just sell us the ability to play the games and give us, you know, it's almost, it just, it seems kind of counterintuitive to me in a way saying like, oh yeah, if you pay for the online service, you'll be able to play Mario Kart and, you know, Smash Brothers online with your friends and blah, 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 blah. Smash Bros does not work well online. It just doesn't. Another negative is, yeah, you're not going to be getting new exclusives. You're not going to be getting first party titles from Nintendo. That's not what's going to be. That's not what the purpose of this is. This is, this is a, rewarding the niche, you know, rewarding the audience with something. And, you know, they can't give it away for free because that's bad business. Another negative, potentially negative, is that this is going to be another annual $25 addition to your current service. It's it's called an expansion for a reason for the fact that it's optional. You don't have to do this. But if you want to have access to these games on your Switch, that's the way to do it. I think the biggest thing that irritates me about this whole subject is I just want everyone to stop complaining and just be happy about the fact that we're getting new features on a, on this device that we all love. And to me, I just I feel like the age of entitlement is at an all time high where we feel like we deserve everything for free when, you know, literally in every other business period, if you want access to services or goods, you pay for those services or goods. If I want to buy you know, the Batman animated series on Blu-ray, even though I own it on DVD, guess what? I still have to pay to get that content. I still have to pay. So why are we treating video games differently? I come back to this all the time. It makes no sense. Like if you want access to this stuff, stop being a baby, shell out the money, pay for it, or go ahead and, you know, continue in your illegal activity if you don't own the games, because it is illegal. If you want four libraries of games, that are going to have continued support in the future as a perk for being, you know, sub to this online service. If it's worth it to you to have that, then yes, it's worth the additional $25. If you barely play your Switch, then yeah, this may not be for you. But all in all, I, I you know, 
I understand, you know, $50, it seems like it might be a lot, especially whenever we have, you know, Game Pass and PlayStation Plus. A lot of us have multiple consoles and pay for these services. I mean, I could understand for sure, but it doesn't do any good complaining about it without a solid, without a solid basis or, or you know, a reason, a, a solid reasoning <laughs> for being upset about this. So that's just my opinion. If you disagree with me, though, let's fight in the comments. Like, come on, bring it on. Br bring your best argument, because I, I am the one to be critic. I have no issue, and I take no umbrage with constructive criticism, especially on this video, or even some of the points. If you, you know, maybe you have some points I didn't think of. Drop them in the comments down below. I want to thank you so much for tuning in, and before I go, check this out. Well, once again, thank you so much for showing up today. I really, really appreciate it. Um, again, if this is your first time here, consider subscribing. I know that's the thing that all the YouTubers do. They're every everyone's asking to sub. The fact of the matter is, is that it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. And who knows, you might even see a video every now and then that you actually like or maybe interested in. Not only that, I do a bunch of stuff, so make sure you check all the information down in the description down below. We got podcasts, we got Let's Plays, we got all kinds of stuff for all kinds of fandoms. So make sure you check that out. I would seriously, seriously appreciate it, and I would love to see you around here more. I am Gabriel Fast. I will always be the wannabe critic. Uh -huh.